Yeah. business to get out of the way first as the bus is in motion. I'd like to ask you please remain seated. You are definitely going to enjoy the tour a lot more if you keep the conversations at a minimum. Now our tour today is going to be about a 45 minute long tour. That'll be my part of the tour. When I'm finished with my part of the tour I'm going to be dropping you off at the Saturn 5 Center. That is a different location than this one. Okay. So, lightning capital of the United States. Yeah, that's not too good for rockets. We actually compete with the Congo. The like rocket there is like the one that took our first. Just check the trees out behind it to kind of get a science comparison. This rocket here is just a little over 80 feet tall. I'd like you folks to remember this rocket because I'm going to try to show you something out at one of our launch sites. Like space history. Most recently, the Space Shuttle Program it launched 135 missions, culminated in the assembly of the International Space Station and lowered orbit. The station is truly an engineer. I think one of the most enduring legacies will be the international cooperation that we've achieved all program, which took us to the moon. NASA is taking steps to send astronauts into deep space with a new Orion exploration vehicle. We have the first spacecraft in history able to ever gone before, including Mars. As capable as Apollo was, the longest round trip mission to the moon was only an exciting peak at our current innovative activities and an eye-opening view of our amazing future. Again, welcome to the John F. Kennedy Space Center. Five feet or 160 meters high. The American flag you see on the front is 21 stories tall. The VAP is where everything comes together before a launch. The Apollo and Space Shuttle vehicles were assembled for flight in the vehicle, the distinctively shaped four-story building which houses the launch team. This is where the ground controllers, engineers, and launch director are one stories tall. Each one of the stars on that flag are six feet from point to point. And the stripes on that flag, they are so wide that if I could, the Apollo rockets and the space shuttle, six billion pounds. They can each carry about three times that much weight. It actually has a surface area on the top of it there, about the size of a baseball infield. Now our crawler transporters, they have to. And not too bad for a hybrid. Now with the space shuttle on top, that's okay because empty on the way back, it races back at two miles an hour. Platform and pick up all eight million pounds of this giant platform. Now if you look, and from there we will maintain control of the space shuttle up until seven seconds after launch. A minute to open the door. And the door that's open there that's called high bay number three. And uh, we are now using that bay there to, uh, to build our new space launch system. Our new space launch system is gonna be even bigger than that. Now what you see inside that door there, that is our new gantry system for the new space launch system. And uh, that is brand new. Researchers from all over the world to work on innovative experiments and help to enable NASA's long-term human Five rockets from. The tall, thin building that you see there, that's where we built the Atlas Five rockets at. As you continue to look along the shoreline to the right, you'll see another set of towers appear. That's Launch A. That's out here in the distance in front of us. And I have a video here that'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing at that launch pad. The CST-100. 
like SpaceX just a few miles from here on a modified Atlas V rocket. We've probably been working very successfully on modifying this launch pad for their new pad. They've also installed a rail system that helps them move that rocket up to the top of the launch pad. And then once up there, they have a giant arm that they use to help maneuver that rocket into vertical position. Now, do you remember that I mentioned that we were a lightning capital of the United States? Well, if you look on the very top of the launch pad, you'll see there's a white pole up there on the very top. That is called a nano. That was a little over 80 feet tall. That's right. We sent our first American up into space on a rocket no taller. That's how tall that is. And, uh, that's not even the top of the rocket. Now right underneath the lightning mass, the tall square section, that's called the fixed service structure. That's from the Apollo program. Yeah, we've been recycling it all these years for the space shuttle program. And that is the section there that has the elevator in it that helps the crew and the astronauts get up to the space shuttle while it's on the launch pad. Now if you follow the concrete portion of the launch pad off, you're welcome to get out of your seats if you'd like. Now, uh, in the background there, of course, you can see there's the vehicle assembly building. Now, back when we were launching space shuttles from this launch pad, no one could be any closer. Now, we're calling this a clean launch pad. And the reason why is because we can launch any rocket from this launch pad now doesn't have to be a specific space launch things over here. These are called side launch. Now we are currently working on resurfacing them. Now we're going to be putting on some special ablative concrete on them. 300,000 gallons of water. Well, that holds another 100,000 gallons of water. Knowledge and the experience that we have at our disposal today come from nearly 50 years of space exploration and ultimately benefit lives here on Earth. Who knows what will come out of the scientific knowledge, discovery, and economic opportunity for the system for the Orion capsule. And how that works is that goes right on top of our new space launch system. And if anything happens during a mile away, where you'll be able to parachute down safely. The landing facility happens to have one of the longest runways in the world. Yeah. Tell it to the camera. Tell it to the camera. Okay.